welcome to another episode of the Halal Gap. I'm Sophia Alani, your co-host, and as always, I'm joined by your other co-host, Skander Thiek. And of course, the man behind the mic, Kamada, where are you at? What's up? Dope. So today we are joined by an incredible guest, Sikandar, take it away. We are so pleased to be joined today by one of Canada's brightest stars. You may have seen him in any number of hit shows from Designated Survivor to Quantico to the critically acclaimed CBC drama This Life, for which he earned a 2018 Canadian Screen Award nomination. He's currently the star of the most watched Canadian series this year, CTV's Transplant. Joining us all the way from his hometown of Ottawa, please welcome to the podcast, Hamza Haq. Woo! What's up, guys? What's up? What's up, man? How are you? Alhamdulillah, man. Keeping busy, you know, as best we all are. No, no, no. Yeah, no. What, have, what have you been up to these days uh, in the quarantine times? I mean, I mean, it's funny, these days in the quarantine times, that's like three months of things, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah, like, um, uh, you know, first bit was uh, a lot of, uh, uh, um, a lot of just staying up late and eating ice cream sandwiches. The second second bit was like feeling bad about that and then ramzan started so that was great uh you know that was really good like uh, i got to spend ramzan at home for the first time in like eight years so that was alhamdulillah that was a blessing like i didn't i didn't know how much i needed that and then since eid you know it's just been you know the the world has kind of taken a turn and the states are on fire and all this stuff is going on so um just as of two days ago like i i I've finished writing a, a short film that I wanted to make in response to that. And today was day one of filming. So that was kind of, um, you know, just gave myself a little project to do. That's pretty cool. So it's pretty yeah. good that you're not just turning back to the ice cream sandwiches and actually you know, <laughs> get the more some work ta- The more we talk about it, the more I'm inclined to do it. So let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> so so this, this short, this short story project that you're working on, that that's in response to what's going on right now. It's, it was like, yeah oh wow okay yeah it was just funny uh um there's these people on uh on instagram they're called uh, the, the monologue slam i don't know if some of you know it people might uh, submit to it but they they do like a it's like a poetry slam but like a monologue but uh, so they've been holding like an online competition um you know so they had their third one just now and i actually wrote a monologue that was similar to addressing you know these uh these issues about uh, about race and, and Black Lives Matter uh, particularly. And then, um, yeah, I was too chicken to like, put it out because I was just like, oh, no, this is my own content. I don't want people to judge me. And then um, so I did something else. And then, you know, the, the George Floyd thing happened. And I was like, yep, yeah, all right, cool, no excuse. So I'm, I'm just trying to create a bit of a narrative just to give myself the, the, the excuse to get these words that I wrote out. Yeah, it's uh, it, it is a I don't know. It's a very interesting uh, time, obviously, right now for especially you know us trying to be as I think as as big of allies as possible. But obviously, being you know here in Canada, also still trying to do our part, however we can. So I applaud you for that, man. That's that's incredible. Hopefully, the hopefully the the short film will will uh, will accomplish uh, everything that I want to say in regard to that. So. That's awesome. So let let's yeah. let's start at the beginning. Let's t- let's get to know Hamza Huck a little bit more, if we can. So uh, you know, I know you, you grew up in in Saudi Arabia. Your your parents are from Pakistan. You you moved to Canada at a fairly young age. So very diverse upbringing. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I mean, what more do you want to know? You've done your research, man. Um, <laughs> I got, no, I got home addresses. I got, you know, teachers, report cards. I got it all. I've done my, I done my research. Yeah, report cards, man. I, I haven't seen numbers that low since. Like, um, but yeah, man, I, I, I'm a compound kid. So like I grew up on a compound in, in Saudi. Uh, uh, you know, my dad worked for the airline. So I, you know, was growing up in that area. It was pretty cool. You know, we thought we had an incredible life, which we did. Uh, um, you know, private schools, all that jazz and, and whatever. And then you step away from it for, for a second and you're in Canada for a couple of years and you're just like, huh, I guess we can just go places without, you know, without a security detail or without having to check in with people or having a curfew or, you know, my sisters can do anything at all, you know? Uh, so, uh, so it was, um, it was quite a, a terrific experience to you know really be able to enjoy that and then realize how much you know how much more life has to offer in terms of human rights and freedom 
um, which which Canada offers uh, in spades compared to Saudi Arabia, well, compared to a lot of places, but specifically to Saudi. Um, but I loved it. I loved it back there because my, you know, our, my parents kept me and my siblings sheltered from all the all the stress of what it means to be a, um, a non-Saudi living there. You know, um, they had to put up with it and, you know, they we were relatively sheltered from that. So that was great. Uh, moved to Ottawa at nine years old, um, moved to a, uh, an area called Bayshore, which, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of brown people moved to. So like when I first started school, it was just like, okay, cool. So this is exactly like Saudi, you know, but uh, a little bit colder and, uh, and I don't know how to, I don't know anything about Canadian history. So, um, and then, you know, slowly but surely, you know, made it to university. I was not a very good student, but we made it. And then uh, I studied uh, I studied film there, um, started uh, taking acting classes while I was in university for film. And then as soon as I graduated, moved to L.A., tried the acting thing, failed a couple of times, gave up, you know, continued to take classes on the side because, you know, I I love doing that. And then I uh, and then I, you know, lucked out into becoming the host of this TVO kids show and used my uh, my earnings from that to move to Montreal and I've uh, been been doing it ever since. That was 2014 and I've been doing that ever since. Damn. So um rewinding back a bit. So back in university, you mm. you did graduate with film studies with a minor in law, which is super interesting, but before that you started in neuroscience. Yeah, and right, then so, ended up pivoting even from there. So tell us about that. Yeah, well, um you know, my my dad's an engineer and my mom has a master's in organic chemistry. So like, like what else was I going to do? Right. <laughs> um, like, you know, but, uh, uh, um, uh, like my, one of my biggest fears is, uh, you know, that was a little bit like one of my biggest fears is, uh, you know, degenerative, uh, uh, diseases, you know, neuro diseases, neurological disorders, Alzheimer's and dementia and stuff like that. And I thought, I thought if there was anything I was willing to, uh, to give my life to, um, to pursuing was, you know, would be to, to help that, um, to try to, um, uh, you know, in a very selfish way to like contribute to, to that kind of research that would aid people who suffer from these kinds of things. So that was the plan initially, you know, I was, um, my marks, my grades weren't good enough to study neuroscience, but that was the plan that I got into, I got into BA psych. And if my, if I could get up to a, a 90 average, I'd be able to turn that into a, a BSC, uh, psych and neuro. So that was the plan. And about three weeks in, <laughs> that's how long it lasted. Um, <laughs> about three weeks in, I remember having a conversation with my brother who did, um, he did his, uh, he did his undergrad in biopharmaceutical sciences. And then he went on to do his master's in environmental toxicology. And, uh, you know, he's eight years older than me. And when I was starting university, he was still in school. So I was like, nah fam i'm not trying to be in school that long <laughs> you know so i switched into accounting and i did that for a year um and because you know i was also you know math right the, the asian six we all we all did it right i'm not the only one we all did it right? <laughs> yeah um okay cool um so yeah I, I did accounting for a year and my marks were probably as good as they've ever been in my life my dad was happy my mom was crying everything was great you know like it probably got me tied for people and stuff and then I was just like, yeah, man, I can't do this. I'm not doing this. Like, I'm not going to do this. Sorry. They're like, what do you mean? You're doing so well. I'm like, yeah, I'm like miserable, man. I can't do this. I don't want to do this. They're like, what do you want to do? I'm like, I want to be an actor. And my dad was just like, oh, man, you're such an idiot. Why didn't you tell me before? I would have sent you to NYU or UCLA or wherever to study wherever you want. And I was just like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? Like, That's a fantastic <laughs> reaction. Yeah, he was just like, he's just like, man, I've known since you were like 12 years old that you're not going to work a nine to five, man. Like, you can't do what I do. You don't like, you don't have the attention span for it. And you're, and you're, you know, the thing that you want to do, like, it would be, it would be wasted on a nine to five. Like, I was also working at the government my last year of university, too. And, you know, that didn't work out either. But, um, but yeah, like, he, we just had a one conversation about it, saying that, like, hey, you know, I want to be an actor. And he asked, all right, cool. You know, you already spent a year in university. We're not getting that money back. So if we already put in some money, let's finish it off and let's just, just get a degree. I don't care what it is. Um, and that gives you three years to build a plan. And as soon as you graduate, you get me that piece of paper 
uh, you know, well, execute your plan. And that's exactly what we did. I was just like, all right, well, what's the closest thing to acting that Carlton has to offer, which was the film studies program. I just, I didn't want to switch over to Ottawa U and take their theater program. There was just something about it that just didn't appeal to me at the time. Um, and then, um, you know, uh, I'm reading more about like, uh, you know, what you need to know as an actor outside of acting. So I started, you know, reading about like taxes and contracts and intellectual property. So I'm just like, all right, cool. Like, then just purely for uh, learning's sake, let me pick up a minor in law just so I can be able to understand all these things that might be coming my way. Um, you know, should I actually have a career in that? Uh, and, you know, ultimately you get there and you realize your agent takes care of absolutely everything. So like, I haven't looked at it, you know, I haven't looked at a contract. I'm just like, yeah, no, it's good. Cool. I trust you. <laughs> um, and uh and yeah, and then as soon as I graduated, I graduated in December 2012. Yep, a semester late. And <laughs> and um, and by January 2013, I was living in Los Angeles in a one bedroom with six other guys, studying acting five days a week and working 18 hours a day uh, at an ice cream shop on my days off. And I did that for about five months till I ran out of money. And that was it was a terrific experience. <laughs> the guy, uh, the guy, the guy who just uh, helped me shoot this short film, um, he, I, I like, he was one of the dudes that I went to LA with. He's from Ottawa as well. So uh, that's wild. That's wild. So yeah, that's that's incredible. There's a perception among a, a lot of. I don't even call it perception. Maybe I mean it's a reality for a lot of people that you know, for for a lot of Muslim and immigrant creatives, that there's this immense family backlash and societal pressure that you're going to face if you choose a non-traditional career path. So it, it's yeah. awesome to hear your experience because it, you know, I, I think you you mentioned this in the past before too that sometimes the the perception is a lot more a lot worse than the reality of those types of conversations with your family. So that's that's good. Yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. The stress around how having having the conversation is you know it's so much it, it, you know the fear around that is, is yeah. so much worse than just being like yo this is what's up and then and then and then it's done and then it's done you know as opposed to just being like all right tomorrow 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 and and then and then and then tomorrow turns into 15 years at the government you know yeah, like, no kidding. Um, no kidding. And, and and yo like real talk no offense to people who work for the government my sister you know spent 10 years at the government and she loved it like she loved it and she was good at it too so no disrespect there this is i couldn't do it i did it for a year and they offered me a contract and i was just like nah fam sorry like I'm surrounded by people who are literally, literally counting down the days till retirement. So, yeah. um, and, and I'm talking like 12 years. They're like one more day. Cool. They're just like <laughs> in the tens of thousands of days. I'm just like, yo, this is, yo, this is not fun. Man. Not your jam. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, at not all. kidding at all. Like I have yeah. seen it <laughs> in the government of Canada. Oh, mm -hmm. That's not even an exaggeration. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. I'm like just motivated that, Hamada to speak. That's a huge, a huge accomplishment. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> yeah, man. That might be the first time <laughs> or the no, second. You know, it, he's gonna, yeah, but he's gonna edit it out though. Yeah, I know that's the problem. <laughs> <None of laughs> the final cut. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. But honestly, that that is like that's the thing, right? Everybody's got their own journey. Everybody's got their own passions. But I think mm -hmm. the one thing that you know people can learn from that experience is that sometimes it's not as scary as you think from a, a family support perspective. And until you have that conversation, you don't know which way it's going to go. Right. So yeah. it's uh, no, that's, that's awesome to hear, man, that you guys had such a, 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 I would say a constructive conversation around it rather than, than a destructive conversation around it. And you were able to, to turn that into something meaningful. So that, that's awesome. But I want to take, you know, a, a little bit of a step back on that. Have you, did you always know that you wanted to go into acting or is that something that you developed over time or, later in your life or what? Uh, I don't, I, I don't actually know if I have an answer to that. Um, I mean, let's, let's find it together. Um, let's do it. We're going to go on an emotional <laughs> journey now. Let's go. Oh, yeah, man. yeah man. it was like, I don't know. I, like I'm the, I'm the youngest of four. Right. So like already like who's dancing at the weddings. Right. So right. like, um, so I guess it was just that it was a lot of just like needing to perform and, um, you know, vying for attention and uh, and needing to be liked and becoming the butt of most of the jokes and having to roll with it and and then just as a result, just you know, um, I was also like I was also like a really fat kid. You know what I mean? Like, uh, yo, me too, bro. Moving, high five. Yo, yeah, me right? three. What? Yo, really? let's go. <laughs> um, yeah, like and and like 
like as soon as I moved to Canada, you know, like we, because we were like adjusting and we, you know, we always used to play outside. We were a bunch of like, you know, like skinny dark kids, like, you know, like sunshine Pakistanis, like staying outside playing cricket and soccer in Saudi heat. You know what I mean? Like that was all of us. And, and then we moved to Canada in the middle of winter eating like fruit by the foot and all this processed food that we've like never had before. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? So like, uh, so just like, uh, I, I like I immediately like as soon as we moved here like gained all this weight and I like I probably kept that on till like you know and and like I'll, I, I say I, I say it like it's a thing of the past you know what I mean like I'm always gonna be a fat Pakistani kid from Saudi I'm okay with that you know what I mean I <laughs> Yo, that's have not to get something that you can ever like, like let go it doesn't matter how good you Bro, look yeah. on the outside <laughs> you will always be a fat Pakistani kid on the inside man I feel that I feel that at a deep yeah, level man. it's just I just have to like I just have to like put on a different suit for like for like the part you know what i mean like it's like okay cool like they need you to be in shape because like okay like you're playing a senior refugee or you're playing like a indian crime lord and stuff like that but i'm like telling you like as soon as we're done it's chicken wings and ice cream like daily you know what i mean like as soon as we're done sometimes before that i'm just like yo what scene is oh okay all right cool man like if, if it's just me driving around like i'll have like you know i'll have a vanilla coke like so like so like i'm i'm willing to I, i'm willing to work hard to like to like not change my body but you know to like look a certain way if it suits the part but i'm just like yo like this role doesn't need me to like be in like shape and stuff like that, whatever like yo i'm just gonna i'm just gonna let it ride man this is, it is what it is you know what i mean like yep love handles that's me that's, that's, that's what we're playing with today y'all okay with that nope too bad i already signed the contract you know talk to my agent i don't know what any of it means but you know um, too good but like too good. so like yeah, now so like, oh sorry, go for yeah. it I was just going to say, so as a result of that, um, I like, as a result of like being a chubby kid and insecure about, you know, the 30 things that you're insecure about as a child, plus like having just moved to a new country, plus being, you know, visible minority, plus like, you know, uh, uh, like everything. And then like, all of a sudden, like you're in a country where like, oh, like what? People just have like boyfriends and girlfriends. Oh man, do I have to look a certain way by, you know what I mean? So it's just like, all right, cool. Like what like what is in my arsenal i'm a really smart kid but like you know like fine like whatever you know like we all had like <laughs> a, we all had like a, a, like alhamdulillah alhamdulillah we all had uh, a, a good like academic aptitude you know and we, we all still do and, and you know my siblings are, are are proof of people who who pursued that aspect of of what we were given from our parents and um you know and i went a different direction is where i used that to justify why i didn't have to pursue it you know um and um and yeah so to make friends to just get through the day like i just had to be like the loudest one in the room the funniest one in the room the most entertaining one in the room and i tr- i failed constantly but the, the the pursuit of that to be um you know to be accepted at, at you know for like for me and and my words and my performance, I think that's what ultimately led to me just being like, well, this is the thing I've been working on the longest. So like, let me, let me put all my eggs in that basket. Hmm. So now, now that like your parents, you know, they were obviously wonderfully supportive the whole time, but now that they're able to like see you on like a show that's Mm. very popular in Canada, like what, what's that like? Um, You know, like, like, you know, I'll probably like, like a hundred percent of my mom's probably not going to listen to this podcast. Right. So I let, 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 you know, let me, let me be real for a sec. Um, <laughs> like my mom's still, I, I don't think like she's still on board. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter like how successful I am and stuff like that. It's just that like when one job ends, I'm essentially um, unemployed and any Desi mom is just like, okay, like, uh, how's he going to do? What's he going to do? And stuff like that, whatever. And I think that was the, that was the big thing where like, obviously my mom definitely wanted me to go to med school and all that stuff. And, but you realize it's, you know, I thought it was just like a, you know, like a hurur thing, like just like, all right, cool, like, made a better doctor, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I just want that. But really, it's just like, nah, man, you get that degree, you can work anywhere, like, you won't go hungry. That's it, that's all, you know? I just want you to work and I just want you to be okay. And then, mm-hmm. so like, there's a part of, uh, of, of, like, my, like, you know, just I think being a mom or a Desi mom or whatever, that any, any job that offers this level of insecurity, um uh, or you know, instability is is always going to stress her out no matter you know how much money i make or or how you know like people's careers just end you know there's just like yo this guy was on top of the world and then he just never got hired again you know totally. that was and that's that's just the way it goes and 
So I think there's that. My dad's, uh, you know, my dad's, my dad's street tough. Like my dad grew up in like North Nazaban, Karachi, you know, single mother, um, uh, eight kids in the family, you know, one bedroom house. Like my dad's, a, my dad's a street kid from Pakistan. You know what I mean? So like, um, he's like, yeah, man, whatever. Just like, you'll figure it out. You'll figure it out, you know, like, and honestly, like, uh, I, re- I, that's, that's where I'm leaning in more, you know, like both my parents are exceptionally like hard workers um and they adapted you know my mother is the most qualified person in the house and didn't get to work a day uh you know in in the field that she was trained at like in her life and then after 20 years of living in canada you know like or 15 years had to join the workforce again um you know to make sure that their uh, you know her kids didn't have uh, student loans to pay for so you know here's this incredibly talented and, and brilliant woman like working at the grocery store and working as a you know as a telemarketer and stuff like that all to make sure that like we don't go through that level of instability right so i can understand her her worry well my dad's just like hey man like we taught them how to work hard that's all it is if they fall on hard times at the very least they know how to work hard so they can pull themselves out of it and um and that's the thing i'm most grateful for I'm, and i've been blessed I'm very privileged so like even now that they see me succeed or they see me fail i think more importantly is is that what i show my parents that regardless of what it is i show them that i I like i work incredibly hard at what i do so like that is the thing that i use to make sure my parents feel comforted that regardless of what level i get to or or my uh you know employment status that they always see me like working towards uh, bettering myself in every way and and trying to be prepared as best i can be for um, for a lot of things. So I think that's the thing that gives them the most comfort, not, not any level of success. Damn, dude. I hope your mom hears that. This, <laughs> Me we too. Gotta send this podcast to your mom afterwards. That, <laughs> that was, that was very well, well, well said. Very, very well said. Yeah. Were you going to say well rehearsed? That was, <laughs> that was from the heart, bro. That was from the heart. I promise you that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm glad you were able to read that well. No, that was great. <laughs> that, was, that was fantastic. Um, okay. So, okay. Uh, kind of changing, changing course a little bit, but, you know, in the same yeah. vein as, as, you know, being a, a, a day actor a muslim actor you you know mm. you you talked a little bit in the past that, that we saw about how relatively early on in your career you made kind of a conscious effort not to get typecast in sort of these standard desi roles of like cab drivers or convenience store clerics or as yeah. a muslim terrorist like what what made you compelled to make that stand like early in your career and, and did you find that that um kept you from gaining momentum or, or was it pretty well received I, I'm very fortunate. Like, you know, if anybody who's like trying to pursue acting as a, as a career um, and, you know, uh, ask for advice or anything like that, like my situation has been very unique. I, you know, my first agent was one of the top agencies in Canada. I barely had a resume. I just think I had a very good interview. Um, and that team has been so um, supportive. I'm with ART. Uh, Amanda Rosenthal Talent Agency. And that team has been so incredibly supportive of anything that I felt. Like, I'll just, you know, there have been times where, you know, I've suffered from like, you know, bouts of depression or like anxiety attacks and stuff like that. And great opportunities come my way or have come my way in the past. And I'm just like, yo, like, I just don't think I'm in any position to like, I just don't feel like it right now. Like, I I just got to take care of my mental health. I just got to take care of my emotional side. And they've been like incredibly supportive of that. And I thank them for, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's such a big part of the the team you, you, you make. Um, but initially, yeah, I took all those roles. You know what I mean? I was, uh, I was in, I was in so many movies where it's just, you know, you just do it in the background and they're like, Hey, you know, I think it'd be funny. Like, why don't, why don't you, why don't you give him a, an accent? You know what I mean? Do the, do the thing, you know, do it, do it, you know? <laughs> and I'm just like, all right, yeah, man, whatever. Cause everybody's just, you know, we all gotta, it's the entry level thing. You know what I mean? Like you just, okay, fine. I, I, I'll do it. And then like, I think it was pride and arrogance that like, you know, like I want to say confidence, but I think I was just really arrogant um, in the right ways to be just like, yo, like I'm too good an actor to be doing this. Like I don't need to do this because it like at the end of the day, like, you know, I'll make like 600 bucks and I'm just going to have another mediocre movie in my credits. I don't, I don't want that. Like I don't, I don't want that. I want better stuff. So I'm willing to wait it out. I'm willing to swing harder for fewer hits, you know, but when I hit, it'll, it'll go further, hopefully, you know? So 
uh, and they were like, my agents were on board. I was just like, yo, just for like, and it, cause I gave them a timeline. I'm just like, yo, like if, if this is something where I just want to make money, cool. Uh, so I told them, just like, yo, for like the next two years or something, like, let's just not do that. Like, don't even forward them to me. If they come across and they ask for me, don't even forward them to me unless you think it's going to benefit me in some way other than money. Um, so like if like uh, if I'm going to be working with somebody of note or if it's going to look like exceptionally good on my resume, like if it's that caliber of project. So it was kind of like, a um, um, you know, a pro, we, we, we evaluated on pro and con basis. But like, you know, uh, money was not a part of the pros list ever, you know, uh, for that little while. Like I'm just like, no, I can't I can't do this for money yet um, well, because I'm not making enough. They're right. not offering me enough to consider that, you know, like, mm-hmm. it's like, yo, like my, my integrity, like, you know, my integrity is for sale, but it's just not cheap. Anymore, yeah. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I mean? like, like, cool. Like you want, like, if you want to pay me 40 grand for three days to, you know, I, and I, and I refuse to ever do anything overtly Islamic. You know what I mean? Right. Like you want to make me like the minority bad guy. Cool. You want me to say Allah Akbar? I'm sorry, man. Like there's, there's a bunch of guys who need to pad their resumes and are just looking for a foot in the door. I'd rather them have that and, and or them have the opportunity to do that while they're trying to get in sure. because I'm already in yeah. people already know to some degree that like I exist. So like, I don't need to do that um, to, to get anyone's attention anymore because ultimately that's all it is. You take shit stuff to try to get someone's attention. And I had a little bit, not very much. I had a little bit. And that was enough for me to say like, all right, cool. I have a little bit of attention. Now I'm just going to work really hard to maintain it. So, and, 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 and that's what I did. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. And so do you feel that like as more Muslims and Brown people start to make an impact in mainstream media, that there is a greater willingness for the industry to accept the complexity of our people? Or do you think there's still a long way to go? Uh, yes. To both, to both <laughs> um, Great. Um, you know, because there is, because there are more conscious projects and more people, you know, of our kind working in the industry doesn't eliminate what it, what already exists. You know, hopefully now there will be more and more and more, but they're still going to make those other ones. You know what I mean? And and you know, those voles are still going to be filled by a lot of people because it's the same thing. Like, you know, somebody's got to play the part, you know what I mean? Like it's, you know, that so long as there's, uh, you know, there's always going to be people writing about, you know, Arab terrorists and, you know, African-American thugs and, uh, you know, XYZ stereotype, you know what I mean? Like they're always going to write about that. And, uh, um, you know, hopefully, like you said, like if there's, you know, with more brown people entering the, uh, you know, the arena, we'll just have more opportunity to do something else. Uh, but, but, you know, that option I think will always be there because it sells, you know, and, uh, you know, this is a business and people are always going to do that. I just don't want to do it anymore. And yeah, uh, I could, I could pray and I could hope that like, oh man, I wish they didn't make these things, but like, you know, like, that's like wishing that they stop. Like, you know, man, I, I, I wish they stopped producing like cigarettes. You know what I mean? Like, Oh God, that'd be, that'd be great if they just stopped making it and we can just like inhale oxygen all the time. Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> you know? And like, and, and you know, like, I don't know if I'm going to actually get to this to edit it, but like, yeah, like I'll have a smoke every so often. I know it's bad for me, but I'll do it every so often. But, um, but yeah, um, you know, I'm tr- trying my best to not, to avoid it as much as I can, both cigarettes and, uh, and crap rolls. Yeah. 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 I like, I like the analogy. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's totally fair. I think it's, it's important to note that, yeah, like there will always need to kind of be until representation is more of a, a topic of like, it is starting to already be a topic of conversation, but until it becomes more part of the mainstream, then yeah, there Mm -hmm. unfortunately are always going to be these smaller roles that people will need to take. Um, but you 
don't need to do that anymore. Segue, because mm. the transplant, um, this has quickly, this show is on CTV here in Canada. It has quickly become a national hit and it was recently acquired by NBC for distribution in the US. So mm-hmm. you're basically George Clooney on ER. <laughs> and so first of all, congratulations on the success of the show. Thank you um, so much. And then like, how, how has it been? Is it surreal seeing yourself as the face of this massively popular show what's it like portraying your character who has such like a unique uh you know situation and struggle and everything um so seeing myself as the face of the show that that was that was very surreal especially when they like like yeah all right i'll like i'll hype myself up a bit when they when they (laughs) when they um when they projected my face on like the big CTV screen at Dundas Square, like that was a moment for me. Like when the first time I saw that, like that was like, I probably shed a tear. Like I, you know, I, I it's probably, it's been 10 years since I, you know, uh, I took a ride share, um, uh, you know, like I took a ride share to Toronto and, you know, for like 25 bucks sat in the back with like some very shady people, and, you know, got dropped <laughs> off in Dundas Square with like, you, you know, like, um, uh, you know, like telling my parents that like I was at uni and stuff like that and spending overnight at like a Tim Hortons and in, uh, in, in Toronto just to like be able to like take my first acting class out there and stuff like that. And then at the safe street corner is like my poster on, a, on, you know, on like a billboard and stuff. So that was like a real cool thing for me, man. I was just like, Hey man, this is, this is really cool. Like I just, I had to say, Alhamdulillah, like I was yeah. like, man, this is, you know, that's like, awesome. Um, that's awesome. I mean, it's, it's just like being kind of hard work to a degree, right? It's yeah, it just, I, I mean, yeah, that, but like, you know, I know a lot of people who work hard for sure, and like, you know, sure. who haven't made it yet, or, you know, people who've been working twice as long as I have, and people who have, who are better actors than I am that just like, you know, it was just uh, like, hasn't been in the cards for them yet. And, and inshallah, it'll happen for them. Sure. It was just like, it was just like looking at it like, like, yo, man, I can't help but, like, look at those boards. And I was just like, yo, he's just, like, a fat Pakistani kid from Saudi. You know what I mean? Like, you did it. You did something. You know, you did, you know, if I stop here, like, that's good, man. I'm, I'm, you know, I don't want to. But I'm like, yo, that's cool, man. You did something. Like, totally. oh, like good for you. Way to go, man. Way to go. Way to go, chubby kid. Like, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. like, honestly, man. Like, uh, and. But, like, at the same time, it was also, like, really strange. You know, like, as dope as it was, I'm just, I, I even called the media team, and I was just like, yo, do we have, like, another picture where it's, like, more than just me? on the?" Pro- I, f- I felt like, you know, it's, like, all of a sudden, all this anxiety, all this pressure, I'm just like, oh, my God, like, it's just me up there. Like, I need somebody else to, like, help share this burden, because, like, yes, there's 200 <laughs> people who worked on the project, but, like, that's not what the, you know, what the million people who are watching the show in Canada, that's not what they know. Right. Like when they look at the poster, when they, you know, when they set their PBRs and stuff like that, they see my face, which is like amazing. But like, I love to put a lot of pressure on myself. So like, uh, um, you know, or it's just, it's just become a habit now. So like, uh, that was a little bit strange. Um, yeah. But I'm, I'm just, I'm just really grateful for, for the character itself. You know, that was. Uh, no, for sure. Uh, and and we'll, we'll, we'll dive into the, the character a little bit. Uh, okay. A little bit more as well, but w- w- something I wanted to to say before we j- jump into that um, yeah. about the show more generally is you know one of the mm. things that um, I love most about the show is that it doesn't it doesn't pull punches right it talks about really like real topics from you know yeah. racism and PTSD through the lens of your character to showing the struggles of young terminal and trans patients to mm-hmm. homeless population issues and drug addiction so. How important was it for you to be a part of a show that's, you know, a little bit more complex and not just your standard case of the day medical drama? Was that was that a big consideration for you or not really? Um, I, I so uh, uh, I didn't know about any of those till like much later, right? So mm-hmm. um, it, it didn't really play into uh, uh, any decision uh, of whether to take the part or whether to. Um, you know, the fact that it existed, it makes me incredibly happy. And I'm so proud that, you know, uh, the writers on the show, uh, you know, and the creator of the show, Joseph K, like that they all saw it uh, as necessary things to tackle. Now, the thing is, um, you have to format it like, you know, that run of the mill, like medical procedural. And I'm really happy that they chose 
this genre to tell all these stories because people love that, you know? So like you kind of give them something that they expect and you trick them into caring about all these things that they didn't know were actual issues. So I thought that was a very brilliant way to go about it. Like, Hey, cool. Like medical drama. All right, cool. Another one, you know, like there's 30 on TV right now. Let's throw in another one. It's going to get a lot of viewership, but um, the, what sets us apart is uh, as Joseph said, you know, the, uh, our lead is a, is a, he's a character that's existed in every single show, but in this one, he gets the spotlight, you know? And I'm like, that's kind of cool. Like he's, you know, there's always the one Brown guy in every show. And it's like, yeah, what's his story? doesn't matter. He's the cab driver and how I met your brother. We don't need to know. Like we don't need to know where he goes when he's not with these fun people. Like, um, mm. so like, uh, you know, we actually get to go home with him and learn about him and, you know, in a lot of ways, he is the stereotype, but you understand, like, you know, the, the, the like, oh, like, you know, foreign doctor, cool, yeah, definite stereotype, but, like, what's behind the stereotype? Like, what else is he other than the stereotype? And and that's the interesting stuff, you know? There's nothing wrong, you know, my, like, my, like, my cha-cha had a convenience store, and the dude's an interesting dude, and I'm like, yo, I would, you know, Kim's convenience, like, you know, it's the stereotype of like Asian convenience store owners, but we go home with them and we learn about their lives and what makes it, what makes them beautiful, what makes them challenging and stuff like that. And that's, you know, um, uh, that's a, that's a great thing to explore. And, and with all these other uh, hard hitting topics, like, you know, trans issues and homeless issues and, and racism in Canada and, and all these things that we generally are not used to talking about. Um, it's kind of dope to be doing doing it in a way that's palatable to a lot of people through the the uh, an accepted genre. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and that's I I personally like I love that about a lot of uh, the shows that I love um, when they're able to kind of address issues that are a little heavier, but do it yeah, like you said, in a way that makes it palatable in a way that. I think it's like almost like sneaky, like they're like sneaking in wokeness into people's yeah. lives and they're just like, here, like we're going to give you these little tidbits of information that will slowly make you start to like humanize these people that you have in the past demonized. Um, yeah. And then it's, it's like the pill in the applesauce, you know? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, playing the role of a Syrian refugee doctor, uh, you mm. have to speak quite a bit of Arabic and need to know a lot of the medical terminology on the show. So how much of that came from your upbringing in Saudi Arabia and your initial foray into the world of neuroscience in university? And how much of it did you have to learn just for the show? And how did that process work? Um, like, uh, I-, I had to learn all of it. So like, okay. <laughs> The, the 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 Arabic and the and the uh, uh, the science, yeah, I had to learn all of it, all of it again. But there was there was like a there was a bit of muscle memory, you know what I mean? Like we grew up in Saudi, like I grew up around a lot of, you know, I'll be speaking. I went to I, you know I went to Quran school, and you know we all learned how to like read Quran and stuff. And our our um, you know we've developed the muscles to make all the sounds right. So like uh, as far as pronunciation, though a lot of Syrians have. Uh, have reached out and said like, yeah, no, it's like, it's good. But you know, you, sometimes you sound a little Lebanese, but that's okay. Like we can, we can look past that. And I'm just like, Hey man, that's fine with me. You know what I mean? Hey, we, we, you know, um, and you know, inshallah, I'll, I'll, I'll work, uh, uh, I'll work harder on that. Should we, should we get to do it again? But, um, um, but yeah, like um, it was, uh, like you said, because, or like I said before, we, we had an aptitude for it, uh, for science and stuff. So to pick up all of that, like, you know, we did all these phenomenal uh, uh, medical boot camps where we learned every procedure that we would, uh, we were going to perform on the show. And then, and then also got like a, a two day boot camp of just a general, uh, you know, like uh, first aid CPR and, and just uh, um, how to like perform a physical exam and all of these things. Uh, so aside from like the special procedures that we're going to do, there was just sort of this uh, general overview of just how to conduct yourself as a doctor and, and all of these things. This is, this is the sort of thing that you would do with every patient and whatever. So, um, so uh, uh, is that, that really thing, right? I haven't seen a medical drama probably since ER. So, I mean, I, like I, that's just actually, maybe that's not true. I watched house a lot too when I was younger, but mm. I feel like you guys, use like way more technical jargon than most network tv shows it, i don't know it, it just feels that way to me maybe it's because i just don't watch a lot of them but it was it like right. a very intense process then or what oh yeah 100 percent. like there was 
I think what was great is that um, it was a it was an equal challenge for all of us, like all of us who are very, uh, you know, um, you know, shamelessly uh, ready to admit that we're not doctors. It was a, <laughs> it was, you know, like we were all so happy to play doctors, and we had uh, these w- lovely consultants. You know, uh, big shout out to Mike Richardson and uh, Doctor Zach Levine, who were there on set anytime we had to do. Um, uh, um, anytime we had to do anything medical and stuff like that and and they, these were just like our two most commonly used and they were uh we had a couple doctors in that i, I can't forgive myself right now for uh for forgetting their names but we had to do uh, uh we had to do a splenectomy on one and then we had to do a, a tracheotomy on another and we had two special surgeons come in and tell us how to do that um and uh and then we had our onset nurses and a lot of those procedures where like if somebody comes into the trauma bay, we have a bunch of nurses help us. A majority of the time, there was one actual like registered nurse who was there with us at all times to make sure that we looked like we knew what we were doing because wow. they know everything. So like there was That's Norm, awesome. Carolyn. Um, ah, come on! Well, all right, but, uh, well, whatever. Uh, sorry, guys. Sorry. I love we you. can we can put him in later. Maybe we'll, we'll get Hamada to post edit, and it'll be Hamada's voice just like pretending. To be yeah, 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 yeah. The redacted, you know. Like, yeah. So um, these boot camps, like, were you at actual hospitals and stuff, and like, or like, uh, no, was we, it at so, the studio? Yeah. So like, they everything that you see uh, on the show, it's one big studio. So they've actually built essentially the first floor of an actual like working hospital. So it's all one big unit. It, there's no like, all right, cool. Now we cut to this side and then we go to another room where it's this, it's all one big unit. Wow. Um, so, so we, uh, um, we, in, you know, on our boot camps, like our, you know, medical health professionals would come and, and we just rehearse there on our days off. And sometimes, sometimes on our days on, and then we take an hour break to like, all right, in two days, we're going to be, uh, you know, we're going to be, uh, putting in a chest tube. So let's teach you how to do that on this dummy. Okay, cool. You good. You good. You good. Yeah, sure. <laughs> All right. You know, you guys, you guys will cut around it if we suck. Right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So big shout out to the <laughs> editing team too, to, uh, who, who, who chopped up all of our mistakes. So thanks. So thank you. truly <laughs> it takes a village. Hey. Oh yeah. Video village. <laughs> So, um, so, mm. so, okay. So now talking a little bit more about the, the character of, of, uh, Bashir or Bash on the show. Um, mm-hmm. so, you know, for those who don't know, he's a, he's a, he's a refugee escaping the war in Syria and has to deal with a lot of kind of specific traumas that he's encountered as well as some of the struggles that come with being a new immigrant in, in a new country. So I'm mm. wondering for your preparation of the role, um, did you do anything specific to try to get a better understanding of kind of the refugee experience uh, here in Canada? Um, yeah, I, you know, we sat down with a, with a couple of refugees. Like there's a, a if you go to the, the transplant CTV page on, uh, on IG, um, Sami Khan, who's a, who's a, um, uh, by the way, you guys should have him on this podcast. Uh, Sami Khan, he's a, he was one of the uh, story editors of transplant, one of the head writers and uh, not one of the head writers, but one of the writers and uh, he was recently just uh, like this last year was nominated for uh, an Oscar for a documentary short film. And oh, he's wow. just he, he was an absolutely invaluable asset to have to like, you know, like we had a you know, we had a brown guy in the writer's room, you know, helping us out. to like, you know, to make sure um, it was a very diverse writer's room. But like when I was initially invited to um, to be a part of that, like it made me as an, uh, you know, as a as a brown dude who was going to be a part of the show, like very. Um, just like feel instantly at, at ease to be just like, all right, cool. Like we got some, we got some, we got one of those back there. So like, you know what I mean? So, and so anyway, so he made a series of, of uh, short documentaries about the, uh, the three principal Syrian refugees who acted as consultants for us, who told us their story and implemented their emotions and everything like that and injected them straight into the, uh, into the narrative of the, of the show, as well as, uh, you know, Teach, you know, talking to me about their experiences and um, uh, everything that they had gone through. So, like, it was a bunch of conversations with them. I was also given some reading to do, uh, you know, just learning about the conflict in Syria, uh, as well as a, a couple of novels. And uh, the one that I went back to um, often was a, it's called The Crossing by Samar Yazbek. And, uh, um, you know, it was essentially a story about, you know, a woman having to flee uh, 
uh, war torn Syria and then have to go back to to save her family and stuff. So it was just it was all it was just very uh, very moving and, and and educational stuff and and uh, you know great to have uh, the opportunity to research all of those things and, and you know. Uh, from a place of privilege of not having to experience them. So, you know, the only way that I can justify playing the part is by, you know, making sure that I know as much about it and I give everything to it uh, to, you know, to experience it on camera because that's, you know, I I have the fortune of, you know, that being the closest that I've ever been to that level of mm-hmm. content. So. That's really amazing. Thank you for for sharing that, like the amount of research and work that went into making this an authentic story, Um, Mm -hmm. because I think that makes me like the show even more because I think that's really wonderful that like, you know, everyone involved in creating this character and everything like had that as their priority. Mm -hmm. Like, that's really wonderful. Um, Yeah. And so I. Sorry, sorry I keep doing it. I keep doing it. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, but I, actually, Joseph, um, you know, I uh, Joseph wrote this life as well. Uh, so uh, you know, you mentioned earlier, yeah. That, uh, yeah. So um, when when I got the part of this life, we built our character together. Uh, you know, my character is a uh, 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 he was just a foreign exchange student. So when I auditioned for it, I did all the accents. You know, I did Arab, I did Pakistani, I did British. I'm just like, yeah, he could be like, yeah, he could be from London or some shit. You know? <laughs> uh, and then, and they just let me pick, you know, it was like, yeah, whatever one you want to do, we'll, we'll just make him that. So I was just like, yo, I've actually like never played a Pakistani on camera. So like, I'll just, I'll just, you know, give a Pakistani aspect, you know, he probably just, you know, like he's even from Lahore or something, you know, I, I kind of modeled him like, a, you know, after my, uh, my brother-in-law, um, hoping he doesn't hear this either. <laughs> um, but, but because of uh, the way we collaborated to make that character, that was actually my, I've mentioned this before, but like that was actually my first job on transplant before I had the part. Um, because we have a pre existing relationship on building a character, Joseph invited me to uh, interject my own experiences of being a brown man and an immigrant um, in Canada to inform some of, uh, you know, um, some of Bash's experience. So, like, he had a huge team, and because we have, a, we had an artistic relationship that, uh, uh, preceded that i was invited to uh, a couple i was invited as a consultant as well as uh, you know to be to sit in the writer's room and observe a little bit to see you know well what would you do in that scenario like, mm. you know because you've been here a while and stuff like that so and then and then two years later i was off of the part so, yeah it, you yeah. know it's it's funny it's not a huge focus of the show but it's obviously you know um a key component of the first first episode but just even identifying the fact that so many people as part of that immigrant or refugee experience you know have these incredibly established careers in their home country but have to move to a mm-hmm. new land all of a sudden and are working minimum wage jobs just to make ends meet just just mm-hmm. showing that even like not not being a central figure of focus of the show but but even that acknowledgement, I think, goes to show that there was thought put into this, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that's something that was uh, very important to to Joe and the entire team, and uh, and the fact that <clears throat> you know CTV saw value in that, um, you know, speaks to uh, what is hopefully a, a you know a, a wave of change in in Canadian television, you know. Uh, yeah, so we, we hope that it'll be for the best. I mean, and 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 speaking of Canadian television, like now now that you mentioned it, I mean, what what are your thoughts? Because you're we're starting to see this uprising, if you will, of like validation of Canadian content. You know, with Shit's Creek mm-hmm. getting huge recognition across the United yeah. States, you guys getting picked up by NBC. Like, are you starting to see a much more, um, I guess, willingness for up and coming actors to stay in Canada and, and produce content for Canadian networks? I, um, ah, man, how am I going to say this? <laughs> <Wait, laughs> <you're getting laughs> no, I don't, I don't know. I, I have, I have no problem. Like, you know, like I have no problem speaking my mind. So like, I think, um, uh, I think what I love about this show and what contributes to its success is that it is not, uh, it is not uh, inherently a Canadian totally, story. Totally. You know, it is, it is yeah. produced in Canada, but it is a universal story. And that was the more important aspect that the style, uh, you know, that, you know, oftentimes there's this like 
there, you know, you say Canadian TV and you already have like a, this filter that you put on it. hundred um, percent. And, and as a result of, uh, you know, as a result of even calling it Canadian TV, it's just like, Oh, okay, cool. That's it's, that's what that is. And like, that is a genre of its own as opposed to like, all right, we're just going to tell a universal story and we're going to do it in Canada. And I think so long as Canada keeps doing that, uh, or the more Canada does that, you know, in a lot of places that works, you know what I mean? Like, like other shows have been dr- dramatically successful, um, keeping that, uh, you know, that sort of uh, uh, mentality or, or leaning more towards that because it's things that are made for Canadian audiences. This, I think, wasn't was made like was not made for a Canadian audience. Yeah. It was made for absolutely everybody, and it took so many, uh, you know, it took a, a massive team of, of diverse. Uh, you know, contributors uh, to make sure that it had a very universal appeal. And I think that's where uh, places like the States, places like Australia, New Zealand, even like Denmark, we're seeing crazy amounts of like Danish uh, content on uh, on Netflix and stuff like that. That's where I think they're a little bit ahead. Um, you know, England and, and Australia and all these places, uh, uh, France too, like uh, where they're creating a lot of content that's consumable, that's relatable to to the human experience uh, and there's there isn't a demographic where where that won't work yeah no yeah. i think uh it, it's obvious to see that you guys are intentionally not like corner gas or or like some of those like og <laughs> canadian shows that have like a very specific bend which is which is nice to see because that gives you the opportunity mm-hmm. to get your message out there across a broader audience right sure sure <laughs> no shade. No shade. I just, I just, I just can't. I just can't. <laughs> no shade. No shade. Love yeah, corner yeah. gas. All right. Sorry, yeah. Sophia. You were going to say something. <laughs> you better not be hating on a classic. We'll get so many letters. <laughs> no, no, no. I love corner <laughs> gas. Okay. We're getting up to an hour, and we still have a little bit of a game we want to play with you. So I just wanted to ask one final question. Um, sure. So we're really excited to see what's next for Bash on the show. Um, but with the show more generally, obviously right now with COVID, it seems like we're in a little bit of a holding pattern and a pause and, and kind of a hiatus. Um, mm-hmm. so how has this impacted the way in which you guys work? Like, obviously you can't film much right now, but how have you managed to adapt to the new reality of COVID? Well, we haven't even, we haven't even been guaranteed a second season, so we're not doing anything. Oh, damn. So like, yeah, because everything's on hold. So we're just like, all right, cool. Well. You know, there's no, there's been no like official statement about, uh, um, you know, so I'm just, you know, uh, because this is a changing time and everything like that, because we haven't done that, like nobody's, you know, nobody's going to um, do something that they don't, you know, put in that amount of work if they don't know if it's going anywhere, especially like, mm-hmm. a, you know, like if, if writers don't get to locked down or stuff like that you know they'll take another project so uh, yeah wow. you know we we just don't we just don't know anything yet so um there's things that i'm preparing for but i am doing it with uh you know proceeding with caution to a certain degree and meanwhile making sure that uh, i stay creative and if we get the opportunity to do it again um uh, we'll do it again and uh and if uh, if not then inshallah you know i'll be able to uh, have a great experience and uh and I learned a lot on the show and to implement all those lessons onto the next project. So hopefully, hopefully we can look forward to seeing uh, more of the the story progress and to see Bash's journey. And, and, and we hope for nothing but the best for uh, the team behind transplant and, 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 and inshallah, once things start to calm down with COVID, we can uh, get back to work on that. But um, fingers crossed, man. Fingers crossed, dude. As Sophia mentioned, uh, we like to end every episode with a little bit of a fun a uh, little back and forth. Uh, we're going to give you a series of rapid fire questions. First thing that comes to your mind, just like one word answers. <sighs> Are you down? Okay. Yeah. All right. We're not hard. Don't worry. Maybe the last one, but the rest are, they should be good. So I will start. You ready to go? Sure. Okay, <laughs> favorite flavor of ice cream? Vanilla. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> you want to yeah. try that again? Like, no, nah, bro. It's it's the truth. It's the truth. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. What's your most rewatched movie? The other guys. 
Oh, okay. Oh, Interesting. <laughs> I like it. Favorite kind of potato? Uh, the, the edible kind. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like like French like, fries or like baked potato. Or like that kind oh, of like oh, like the favorite. Oh, okay. Um, Way to uh, eat uh, them. Uh, oh, uh, um, da, uh, mashed <laughs> mashed potatoes. Yeah, what? mash is good. Mash? Good okay, all right, all right. Yeah, by the way, none is also an option, just an FYI. No, that's, that's one I would no, no. And I, lo- I love me a potato, man. Okay, okay. Ah. fair enough. Yeah. Everybody loves what, what's the, uh, I mean, obviously, uh, transplant on the CTV app, but besides that, what's the most binge worthy show on any platform right now? Uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine, Netflix. Yes. <laughs> nice, Agreed. nice. Agreed. Okay, and finally, raisins in your biryani or nah? Bro, like, just you just ruined my day. Get, <laughs> uh, get your get your kishmish out of my biryani, bro. I don't need that. Man. Oh, man. <laughs> get it out of here. I <laughs> completely agree. Raisins do not belong in biryani. That's a very like Afghani thing. I feel. I don't know if I've ever yeah, had. Like, you know, like I, I like I got some I got some Irani family. Y'all want to make a you know a zirish palau? Like I'm okay with that, you know, because I know they expect that. But yeah. like, yo, like. Like raisins in my biryani, like yo, that's that's elaichi level. Um, <laughs> so, you know I mean? like, they're traps. They're traps. You know what I mean? This is like, like why? Like all of a sudden, like like raisins and gosh, like what? No, like, what, are you, yeah. what are you doing? Yeah. Although you know I, mean? I have my best friend, which like this has me reevaluating our like twenty year friendship. Is she said that she loves raisins in her biryani, and if she has no raisins in her biryani, she will put raisins Absolutely. in her biryani. Was she Kashmiri? No, she's Pakistani, man. Born in like mm. Lahore. That's mm, okay. That's an, I, I know. I mean, I hey, know. to each their own. Sorry I, guess. Up, but. <laughs> I like how Sophia's questions today were all food related. By the way, <laughs> hey mom, that's okay. I love hey, it. Like, love R- it. R- Ramzan's done. Right? That she's been done. Flex, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's right. Yeah, exactly. My heart's at. Truly. I love it. <laughs> Hamza, thank you so much for joining us, man. Before we let you go, where can people find you? Um, well, like, like, like Instagram, Instagram. <laughs> yeah, not, not like, where are you personally? <laughs> like, where are you uh, right now? Catch me outside. How about, um, <laughs> um, I, I'm, I'm, uh, my socials are only Instagram, um, at uh, HMZLHQ, uh, on Instagram, and that is that. Love it, amazing, appreciate yeah. it. All right, man, thank you again so much for joining us. Um, uh, man. Not, nothing, nothing great. the best, man, appreciate it. Thank you for joining us for another episode of The Halal Gap. You can find us online by searching Moscow's Film Festival on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Well, what was it? Be here next <laughs> Listen, we to, we're going to be here next week. You, you should ho- join we us. We hope you can hear us <laughs> next. Please send in your suggestions of how we can properly end the show <laughs> by visiting us at themoscars.com slash how do we end this show. <laughs> <laughs> I like it.